Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a new project today. This project I'm calling the Hideaway Book and you will see why as we go on. The first thing I'm going to do is take out the um, coffee dyed paper and I have some rectangular thinlets that I'm going to use instead of cutting each individual page by itself um, by hand, I'm going to use the die to cut the pages because I want them to be exact and I need them to be folded and this is an easy way to do it. So I'm taping down the die with the uh, blue painters tape and it's going through the um, cuddle bug. I do it once or twice. I'm showing, I think in this clip I'm showing you the single page where I do one sheet of paper and after doing that once I decided that uh, maybe that wasn't the most efficient way to do it and then I cut it in half because I did not line the crease, put the crease on the outside of the thinlet. So here I'm folding all the sheets lengthwise. This is an eight and a half by 11 paper that I copy dyed. So then I make sure that the thinlet is on the outside of the fold. Because if you don't, then you get two single sheets like what you just saw. So I'm taping it down just to be sure. I think I do either 11 or 12 of these sheets. And I run it through twice. I like doing it twice. I'm not trusting. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Success! Yay! So then I decided, well, I need to do it two at a time. So I decide that I'm going to cut them two at a time, and I did. Now I'm cutting the second time. This is the ones that I cut the first time. Now this is the next smaller size down of the die. I'm measuring this, trying to figure out where I want it on the paper. So I'm doing the height and width so that I can determine how far from the top, how far from the bottom, and how far from the folded edge do I need to make the cuts. And I put down here in the caption what size it, the sheet turned out to be. Because I don't remember. <laughs> I think I might have thrown that piece of paper away. It's, I knew I was going to do that, so that's why I put it in the caption. All right, so I'm putting it th the pre-cut sheets with the first die. Now I'm doing it with the second one. And let me tell you what, that blue tape really stuck well. It A couple times, I think it might have taken off a, a little bit of layer of my coffee dyed paper. I can't remember if I did these two at a time or not. I think we'll see in a second. Oh, I did. I did them two at a time. And I set all the scraps aside, and you will see why later. This is going to be a two-part video. I don't want the video to go on for an hour, so I decided to make this one a two-part video. So this is part one. There's all the scraps. Now I'm going to fold the scraps in half, and I'm going to make signatures out of them. Now this is from the first cuts that I did, the larger sheets. I'm turning them all the right directions. Now I'm going to cut off that extra stuff, unsightly stuff there. And it, took, takes, it takes me a couple tries to get them right. There's the first cut, and then I end up with a little nub on the edge, so I got to get rid of that. So now I got to cut it again because I'm trying to make it even smaller than it was before. And I'm not going for a certain size, I just want it straight. And we're going to do it again. <laughs> Third time's charm. I do love that knife. I find this is easier than cutting with scissors sometimes. All right, so there that was all the, wow, that was fast. That was all the leftovers. Here is what I'm using for the cover. These are the backs of pads of paper of some sort. I was trying to pull off the, uh, the attachment from the back. There's my measurement of what 
the um, outside paper is that has the hole in it, the signatures. So I lay it on the board thinking, oh, well, that'll be okay. Nah, wait and see. So I want to add an eighth of an inch onto it because I want it to have a little bit of a lip. So I'm going through and measuring and measuring from the top and the bottom. So I make sure I have plenty of room for it to move around a little bit. And I don't like my paper to drag on the shelf. I think I've mentioned that in the past. So I'm going to use this knife to cut it off. And I'm cutting two at a time because I want them to be both the same size. All right, so it looks pretty good there. Nope, maybe not. So, so now I'm going to cut a little more off the edge because it was too much hanging over. So now I did the little measurement thing again. And we're going to cut it again. So then we put the second board on it, and we're going to cut it again. <laughs> Please do not ask me where I learned how to do this, because I <laughs> no one will want to even have glasses for anything. Oh, it's that brown person. <laughs> All right, so I think, am I satisfied this time? I'm looking at it, thinking, well, how's it look? <gasps> nope. <laughs> going to cut more. All right, so I forgot to turn the camera on while I was doing this. This is paper that I um, jelly printed and stamped with stamps I carved. So I'm taking PVA glue and I'm gluing down the, um, the paper on the inside. I've already glued the top and I put it underneath the cuddle bug because that thing's heavy and weighted it down for a couple hours while the glue on the front sides of each of the pieces dried. Now I'm kind of creasing this with the uh, bone folder so that I can make sure that the corners look really good. I have a problem with making sure that corners are perfect. It drives me crazy when they're not, but I've still yet to determine what exactly is the best way. I've tried lots of people's methods, and I think this one might be as close to good as I can get. Of course, I'll still keep trying. I ripped the paper on one of them. There you go. Too much glue, too much pulling and tugging. I think I'm only going to show one of the boards, but they were both done the same way. And this is rather thick board. This is more than a cereal box or a pasta box. It's heavier than that. I try not to over pull, but I think I'm doing a good job. I pull on it and it's ripped. And you're like, well, that won't go in the Etsy store. All right, so that's the first one. There's all, there's both of them all finished. I like the way they look, but I have another problem. I do not have enough paper left over from covering the fronts to do the inside cover. And I tried and looked through all kinds of jelly um, paper that I made, and I decided I would take a piece of yellow cardstock and try to emulate the paper on the front. So there's the um, the alphabet that's on the front. There's my fish stamp. And there'll be another rubber stamp in there somewhere. That's black stays on, jet black. The other paper was jelly printed. And now I, I'm not doing any jelly printing on this. I'm just stamping. And you'll see the other stuff in a second.
There's the fish. Okay, so I'm taking these crayons, these water-soluble crayons that I bought at some nondescript discount store in Austin, Texas. So I'm going to try to, I, since it's not jelly printed, I thought, well, you know, I can just smear some of this on and with the wet paintbrush and try to get it to look sort of like the paper on the other side. I really like the paper on the other side, and I should have photocopied it, and I did not. I'm sorry now I didn't, because I really like the paper. So I'm trying to make it look like the other side, and using it as a guide. Nope, not even close. <laughs> I'm getting there. All right, so, you know, if one color is good, then, like, five more will be better. I look like I put it on lipstick. And that stuff's really red. And the thing I like about those, they are very creamy. Very creamy. So I used a yellow and a, a yellow and an orange and a red, I think is are the three that I used. And the water thing that I'm using is the is what they use in nail salons for their uh, nail polish remover where they pump it with the cotton ball on top. That's what I'm using for the water for this. That came from Dollar Tree, geez, more than a few years ago. I really like it. But it does get annoying that it doesn't pump out fast enough. But to be honest with you, I was feeling very lazy and did not want to get up and change the dirty water that was sitting right next to that off camera where you can't see it looks like it looks like a swamp creature could live in it. The water, so, the water is so dirty. So I had to change the water, and I just didn't want to get up right then and do it. So this is my <laughs> plan B. <laughs> don't tell me y'all don't have dirty water. Now, come on. So there they are, the orange, the red, the yellow. All right, so I kept going over it with more water to adding more color, and it was so crinkled, I decided I would iron the paper so that it would be flat when I glue it onto the boards. It's not exactly the same as the boards, but it's close enough that, uh, you know, I was okay with it. So here I am measuring again. I really hate math, but I wanted to make sure that I covered up all the board. I wrote down the measurement. Not that that ever has anything to do with it when I get done. <laughs> I'm being so meticulous and trying to get it so close, and then I'll cut it, and it won't even, it won't be the right size. It'll be too small. Not this time. This time I actually got it right, but more times than not, the odds are against me. Man, that paper looks really red on camera. Okay, so I know i got to cut it three and a half inches. This paper cutter only goes up to five inches, and I think the other measurement is six, six something. So then I have to get out a different paper cutter to cut the length of it. The width I could do with the guillotine cutter, but the length I've got to do with yet another paper cutter. I did not use the big paper cutter because, honestly, that would be overkill. Here I am with another Fiskars trying to get it cut right. And as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, please let it be right. I don't want to have to do this paper again. That's why I keep looking at the end, and I lift it up once under my finger, like making sure I got it right. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I got it right. Yay! 
Write that down, please. It might never happen again. All right, PVA glue again, and lots of it, evidently. This time I did not use a paintbrush because it stuck to the bottom of the jar that's like the Black Lagoon. I think that it's close enough. The, the backside's close enough. I look through drawers and drawers of paper to try to figure out a good paper to put on the other side. And I didn't want to use plain paper. I didn't want to use a plain cardstock. I wanted something that would complement the other side. So this was my solution. And there we go. That's how I weighed it down. All right, so now I'm making... Um, signatures and the covers there's three signatures there and I don't know how many I think there's four pieces of paper in each one of those three signatures this is leftover board and leftover paper you know the stuff that I was stacking up in the small pile a while back well these are those little pieces of paper that were folded in half and now they are three signatures and I'm making another little book with the leftover fish paper that I could not cover the inside with because there wasn't enough of it. I was not wasting that paper or any of the paper. I'm, I I got to use it up to the nth degree. Yes, I did throw some paper away it was the little teeny strips that I cut a while back. But for the most part, I have I used every inch of that sheet of paper. I'm just going to cut the ends off and pray that it works. <laughs> I'm feeling very lucky today. Except for I'm going to hedge my bet. I like gluing those little corners in the corners just in case. <laughs> Actually, I did manage to get all the corners to meet this book. I'm shocked, I know. I know you're shocked too, huh? I need to buy stock and PVA glue. And I have just enough of that paper left over that I can cover the inside too. Now the, the outside sheet of paper is the original paper that's on the outside of the first book. And the inside will be covered the same as the inside of the first book that I covered. It'll be the same. I must be feeling really lucky. I didn't put any of those little corners. Yep, I'm feeling very lucky. I am living dangerously now. Woohoo, it worked. And then I put the Cricut on top of that and weighed it down. Once I'm done, there's the paper from the other side. I have just enough of that to cover. There we go. No math, just guesstimates. I have just enough to cover up the inside of the books and I'm so happy that I don't have to hunt around yet for another piece of paper. This will conclude part one. Thank you so much for watching. Please come back for part two to see what it is I end up putting these together with. These are both part of the same project. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in part two.